Hey, it's Tim. And it's Amy from Go With Less. We're glad you're here. In this week's video, we're sharing not only all of our spending from 2021 with you, but we're also getting into a deep conversation about it. So we hope you watch the whole video. In 2015, Amy and I retired in our late 40s. And in January of 2020, we sold our home and became full-time nomads. Every Wednesday here on our channel, we're talking about our nomadic fire life. We hope you'll give today's video a thumbs up. Subscribe over here for those Wednesday videos. And we're going to dive right into the numbers because the numbers are just a small part of today's conversation. So here we go. We're going to put up our slide of our totals for our nine categories of spending. Now, what you're going to see here is everything we spent with three exceptions, three things to note. Number one, we're missing any spending from our business and our business would be go with less. So anything related to new camera equipment. We set up an LLC for Go With Less this year, uh, a conference that we attended. We pay a, pr a monthly uh, subscription for our editing software and music and someone to do our thumbnails and all of that stuff. Well, all of those expenses do not show up in our spending. We used to have it there yep. until spring of 2021. We decided to take it out because we had, I don't know, we had a new laptop this year, all kinds of expenses. We also had taxes that we didn't pull out earlier in the year, which we have pulled out now. So I apologize for making this a little bit confusing, but we pulled out taxes because the only taxes we had for all of 2021 were the self-employment taxes associated with Go With Less. So those are also gone. That also, we will not be reporting on that going forward either. That's right. And so for, I know some of our viewers actually keep track of every category every month. And so if there's a slight discrepancy, it is very likely attributed to the this business thing. And part of it is we figured like, first of all, it doesn't really make sense to put into our personal spending. And the more we invest into the whole go with less channel and the more we spend on equipment, the more our spending would rise. So it really, it, the stuff that we're using is really just dedicated for the channel. And we're not reporting any of the income in our reports. So it didn't really make sense that also we have, yeah. Like, I mean, we, we feel like maybe we were investing in the channel and we were trying to meet this number and it felt like we were sort of constrained being arbitrarily. Uh, and so we, we just wanted to have the, the luxury of being able to spend that without worrying about it. And I, I'm just gonna mention, uh, we are working on our taxes for last year. Our t entire net income for the two of us for this whole go with less thing is under $9,000. That is not only from YouTube, but also some affiliate relationships. So, uh, so yeah, so not a lot of money. We still are retired in our mind. Okay, that's the first thing that's missing from our Numbers. The second thing that's missing are uh, is the money that we spend on our daughter's college. We have money in a separate bucket for her uh, education, and we're using that. So uh, our daughter doesn't really like us to talk much about her uh, more than this, I guess. So we aren't going to get into it any deeper than that. But whatever we're paying for her college, we're not going to be reporting that. And then the last thing is our ACA premiums. Yep. So. Last year we had, because we have highly subsidized insurance, we had zero dollars in terms of health insurance premiums in 2021. We were on an ACA plan, an Affordable Care Act plan, or Obamacare is how other people might know it. And so we had zero premiums. We had a lot of health care expenses this last <laughs> As year, you see. but we had no <laughs> premiums associated with our, our health care. And that health care came with a very high deductible cost plan, which is why it, uh, our health care is still in the number two category, even though we didn't have any health care premiums. Okay. so. We're going to kind of backtrack a little bit. So here we are. We're seeing $47,756, which is just over 133% of our target, which was $36,000. Does that make you worried? And if not, why not? It does not make me worried. And so <laughs> primarily because we've talked about this quite a bit, our $36,000 is somewhat of an arbitrary number. Back in 2015, as we started moving into our fire life, we, we thought we were going to be spending about $50,000 a year. We just lived our life. We've never kept a budget. And even the, when we talk about it and we say, unfortunately, we say this, we say $36,000 <laughs> is a budget. It is not a budget. It's just a number that we're trying to meet. It just turned out just doing our natural course of living that we were spending about 36K. Without we settled even on that. It yeah. seemed to be just a number that worked for us. We were spending roughly $3,000 a month. And that's how we came up with that number. It's just a number that we were comfortable with. So we have a lot of headway when it comes to spending uh, in terms of if we're using our, the safe withdrawal rate that we utilize whenever we fired, uh, we have a lot of room to potentially be spending more money. And so that's why we're not necessarily worried that we were, we're over We're still this under year. where we thought we would be back that's in exactly 2015. Right. Uh, also, the money 
money that we didn't spend every year, we put that into like a buffer account. So if we do have any extreme outlier expenses that bring us to some sky high number, we have an account all set up to draw from if we need it. Yeah, and that, that, that bucket of money there is just sort of, in our mind, it's if we ultimately need to buy a car again, if we need to, uh, if we have some huge medical expense, if I have to have back surgery and I have to spend $50,000 on it or something like that, some extraordinary expense, that money's just sitting there, again, sort of a, 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 a not a buffer. So, so buffer so that a we don't buffer. have to worry about it. And here's the, we've said this over and over when it comes to our credit card points, when it comes to our spending in the past, what got us to the point of being fire is living below our means. So we continue to live below our means and you're seeing that in our numbers. Now, uh, I'm going to mention a couple things that helped our uh, numbers get our spending keep, stay as low as, as it was. Number one, we had nine house sets. If you watched last week's, uh, maybe it was week yeah, a lot, two weeks ago, yeah. video, two weeks ago video it was where we broke down uh, that we had almost 70 percent of house sits in 2021 that saved us an enormous amount of money when we don't have anything for accommodations for more than two-thirds of the year yeah so it's an, an incredible uh, we, we had no idea that coming into the year that we were going to have that many nights yeah. in houses it just sort of worked out that way so allowed us to save a lot of money but then also travel hacking was yeah, a huge so one travel hacking is certainly a big part of what we do so um, we uh, we utilize travel hacking in a variety of ways all these points and miles we've earned over the course of years and years and years including we continue to sign up for new credit cards to earn points and miles we use those throughout the year to make it so that we have hotels for free for free being in quotes and we'll talk about what I mean for free here in a bit but there's uh, there's just lots of opportunities we find in travel hacking where we can keep our costs low especially when it comes to traveling so obviously these are these are, it's a great tool to have in our toolkit so I'm, it saves us thousands of dollars a year I don't we don't know how to necessarily pin a specific number on it but we save a lot of money so we're gonna talk about sort of the costs associated with that travel hacking uh, or at least some of the costs and that is we have 15 cards that we pay pay annual fees for we have a lot more cars than that it's just 15 of them have annual fees and last year in 2021 we paid one thousand seven hundred and sixty eight dollars in annual fees associated with that and so whenever we pay those annual fees you'll see it in our spending we'll break it out whether if it's an air, airline card we'll break it out into airfare or whatever so throughout the course of the year you should have seen one thousand seven hundred and sixty eight dollars worth of fees broken out across probably lodging and airfare. And the uh, thing is, is if we are getting value from a credit card, we still pay these annual fees. So and if we, don't, we get more than this worth of value, yeah. significantly more than this worth of value, which is why we spend it and why we still pay annual fees for 15 credit cards. Okay, now what hurt our spending? So I had surgery back in March and that was, I ate up my entire deductible, which uh, was somewhere about $4,500 and then still paid out of pocket. So that was $6,500 for my surgery. Tim ended 2019, uh, December 30th. He went to the ER for three hours for a bout of diverticulitis, his first ever. And that bill was $1,000 and that needed to be paid in about $1,000 and that needed to be paid in January. Also in January, that uh, just the, the very beginning of the year, we had to buy new tires. That was close to $1,000 dollars about a thousand dollars we prepaid our, uh, a lot not all of it but we have five cruises coming up in 2022 we prepaid a lot toward that in 2021 so we don't know what that's going to mean for that we prepaid maybe that'll help us oh it's definitely going to help us <laughs> we have uh, I think, is it over, maybe it'll help over 40 or 50 nights that we're in cruises over 50 nights over 50 nights we're going to be in cruises well, we hope. assuming they all go which uh, who knows if that that's maybe they don't but if they do we're not then, going there <laughs> <laughs> then we we have most of that prepaid. Also, we had $2,500 of charitable donations just in the last uh, month of the year. That was in our only charity, but $2,500 in charitable donations uh, in December, definitely. And it, it lets you know that, that we weren't sweating our budget if we were making that kind of a donation uh, right at the very last moment. And then the other huge thing, which you uh, may have noticed from our last chart, is our dining. So Tim and I, Tim says it regularly when dining shows up as our top category, that if dining is at the top we're living our best lives unfortunately we are gaining weight to living yeah. this best life but we are eating really delicious food and we find extreme value going out to eat eating local food we did a lot of cooking in 2019 on the road we that was like sheltering in place covid in 2020 we were out to eat a lot more a whole lot more a whole so, lot more and that accounted and we also had uh, some meals out that with with people something we weren't really doing in 2020 we had yeah. nice meals out with groups of people so 
So it was just a completely different experience, but we spent a lot of money yeah. on food food this year. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you, we're gonna compare our 2021 categories to our 2020 categories. So just to give you an idea, take a look at some of the different categories. Again, that, uh, that uh, Food and dining is, is a real whopper there. We're gonna mention something here to these like unexpected expenses. The reason why we live below our means now is first of all, our life works at the, whatever the spending is, it's working. So whether it's 36 or whatever, 48 uh, like it was this past year, that level has been working for us. So we know that these unexpected expenses are to be expected. We don't know what they'll be, we don't know when they'll come, but we do know that uh, there will be unexpected expenses along Along the way so it's just uh, that, that, I mean yeah I mean just even look, not looking at history we don't always know that the same things are gonna happen the fall we don't know well, hopefully this year we're not gonna have ten thousand dollars for the medical expenses oh, so yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see how it pans out so these things that we used to call outliers and I guess we still refer to them as outliers those, that's just part of life happening yeah. so we have expectations that we're gonna have these outliers and that's why we spend so much less than what we can spend is because we're preparing or trying to prepare for these extraordinary expenses. So, okay, so that's gonna move us into our raise for 2022. We've been mentioning this for a couple, I don't know, at least two months now. And I'm gonna even, before we say what the raise is, I want to say that why are we giving ourselves a raise? Well, January of 20, I can't remember the years, January of 2021, what year is this? 2022. Okay, 20, <laughs> January of 2021, we were in the hole in the very first month. Between Tim's $1,000 at the ER, our tires for $1,000, we were deep out of the hole, in the hole. My surgery came in March, and at that point we knew that we weren't going to be on track, really, for the rest of the year. There wasn't that much fat in our $36,000 plan, and we weren't prepared to be eating rice and beans or ramen noodles from a package to make that number work. We still want a fabulous life. So, okay, so it was a bummer to be reporting those numbers and we were over budget month after month after month all 12 months so okay so we're giving a raise to just give ourselves like a little breathing room yeah and so there's also something else that's driving it so if, if you listen to any piece of news you know that inflation <laughs> is happening right now and we've actually experienced it in spades especially with Airbnb so it seems like 2020 versus 20 21, the places where we wanted to stay, like it was twice as much as it was in 2020 to stay in an Airbnb in a place where we wanted to stay. So we, we've seen inflation just really in our face. Also, we, I mean, you, oh, I want to mention an yeah. example, a yeah. real life example. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So in, uh, we have a video from Merida in March of 2019. We had an Airbnb there and Merida was very affordable. So you got a little tour of our Merida Airbnb. A friend sent the link and said, you're going to not believe this cool, cool Airbnb uh, is really expensive though and I opened it and said holy cow that's the Airbnb out of all the Airbnbs you're gonna send me in the world how random that it's one that we stayed at uh, several years ago so I said but it wasn't expensive and so what I did is I compared the exact uh, price that we paid in March of 2019 to the same dates, it was only two nights, for Mar into March in 2021, 2022, three years later, same exact dates, two nights. It went from $50 a night for two nights to $300 a night for two nights. And Merida, in our opinion, when we were there in 2019, was a really affordable place. So $300 for like a shared accommodation, that seems just nuts. But when Tim says double, I mean, that's six times. It's yeah. something that we actually stayed in. Yeah, and we're seeing it across the board. I, I, Maybe we can blame some of our food expenses on inflation. I don't think so. So anyway, <laughs> there's a, we are seeing inflation. And so so uh, what's our rate? Certainly, hang on. Oh. The, the safe withdrawal rate, are, are, are using the 4% rule, it allows for you to adjust for inflation. And so that, that's something we've never done. So with our spending, we're going to go ahead and make an infl inflation adjustment plus something that has nothing to do with inflation. It's we're just, just picking some number out of the uh, air. Giving us some, uh, some <laughs> mental health, I'm going to go with that, a mental health adjustment. And, uh, and we don't know, by the way, I, I, I know I'm beating around the bush Holy here. cow. We don't know, <laughs> by the way, whether we're going to spend the number I'm going to share with you or $36,000 or $60,000. But nonetheless, we have no idea. the number that we're going to target going forward in 2022 is $4,000 a month or $48,000 a year. Yeah, and let's see how we do because 
I mean, we're showing you this real time. Like we have no idea what our expenses are month to month to month. And sometimes we're in Mexico. We think that it'll be very cheap and it isn't. And a big part of that is maybe we're going to gringo -y kind of places sometimes and they add up very quickly. So yeah, so $48,000 starting in our January spending, which is really exciting. We got a raise. We got a raise. <laughs> we Ooh. gave ourselves a raise. So we want to know from you, has the inflation that's happening, has that affected what you are spending? How, do you target a budget? Have you increased? your budget at all. I know our friends over at the Geek Streamers a year ago did a nice raise for themselves a full year ago and so I'm curious to see how their numbers are doing and how they're tracking but uh, what about you? What's happening in your life? We'll see you next Wednesday. Hasta luego. Adios.